Africa is from an archaeological point of view a hotspot for the study of human history. Since ancient times, its inhabitants have provided cultural inspiration and knowledge that became the foundation for many aspects of modern life. Africa is an adaptable continent which in its history has always been subject to strong climatic and economic changes. Internal conflicts and large migratory movements were the result, and still are. Funded by the German Research Foundation, the Entangled Africa program was launched in 2019. What is so extraordinary about this program? The research is interdisciplinary. Natural sciences and humanities work hand in hand. And the focus is on the observation of connections and exchanges between ancient cultures. This means we study the people and the environment of the last six millennia from an African perspective. Ten scientific projects study material from over 40 research sites south of the Sahara. The Connecting Foodways project deals with the exchange and spread of food traditions in Northeast Africa. The pyramids of Meroe in Sudan, like the tombs of Pharaonic Egypt, served the cultic memory of the local rulers in the first millennium BCE. Representations of an ideal daily life of the ancient people were carved into the walls of the chapels. The tombs are part of the UNESCO World Heritage and are only one of many archaeological sites in the region. Nearby, the remains of the 2,000-year-old settlement were discovered at Hamadab. Here on the shore of the Nile is where everyday life took place. In 2020, archaeologist Ulrika Novotnik revisited the excavation site. Jetzt stehen wir auf dem Hügel, Siedlungshügel von Hamadab, mitten in der Stadt. Oberirdisch ist nichts zu sehen und nur 5 bis 10 cm unter der Oberfläche erscheint dann ein Stadtplan. Hamadab was a hub for trade and exchange, part of the large networks of Northeast Africa. The Connecting Foodways project focuses on these connections and their influence on the lives of the non-elite population. Well-preserved kitchens have been found in Hamadab's domestic buildings. They can be used to study food habits and cooking traditions. The sherds of storage vessels and oven pots show traces of use and still contain tiny plant and animal remains. Samples of these remains are also used to determine the age of the finds. The archaeological and scientific data are combined with ethnographic observations. Some cooking utensils and food items have been an integral part of the traditional cuisine in the Sudan for thousands of years. These include pots that are now made of metal, but some of which are very similar in shape to their ceramic predecessors. Sorghum millet has also been a customary part of the cuisine for the people settling the Middle Nile Valley since ancient times. It is a staple food from which Sudanese women prepare a thin, flat bread for their families. <laughs> Suwal Abdel Tariq bakes her bread on metal, but she remembers that her grandmother used a ceramic plate. However, although the use of aluminum iron has become common today, they have not yet managed to completely replace the traditional clay pots. In Sudan, these are often still produced without a potter's wheel in a shallow pit in the ground. This potter has spread a sack over the pit for easier handling. The clay is then beaten and joined together in rings. 
some vessels are ultimately decorated. Very similar pots were also excavated in Hamadab and at many other sites in Northeast Africa. Thousands of such ceramics are stored in the Sudan National Museum in Khartoum as well as in other archives. Six, six. Ulrika Novotnik and Stephen Matthews are comparing these to the new discoveries from Hamadab in order to trace the spread of cooking traditions and food habits from the Nile to the Horn of Africa and to the shores of Lake Chad. <laughs> 